So notice that there's things on the left and right side of our notes. Now I'm just going to copy this down on notebook paper just as you see it here. And once I do, I'll go ahead and solve these two problems, follow along with the video that goes with it, and we'll go from there. So first, I'm going to go ahead and copy down everything you see on the left. Okay, so when I say write these notes, right, I'm going to make it look similar to my Cornell notes. So in other words, I'm going to go ahead and get a ruler and just kind of break this up into pieces on my notebook paper. So I'm going to draw me a line going down here, and I'm going to draw me a line going across the middle. And now I'm just going to go ahead and fill it out. Now the first thing you want to do when creating your own notes is you want to put your name at the top so I know who to give credit to. Now of course I'm going to be looking in your notebook, right? But I also want to see your name up at the top. If you would, go ahead and put the title on the top as well of whatever the topic is. For instance, this topic, when we're looking back in Google Classroom, was the distance between two points. So I'm going to write distance between two points. All right, so I have my title, I have my name, so that way I know who to give credit to. I'm now going to go ahead and start on this top left quadrant. Now notice up here the question was, how do I use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. Now, I know that was a decent amount of writing, but when we don't have the note packet, we do need to go ahead and write the notes. This would be no different than if I were teaching this in the class and I didn't have the printed notes. And just to let you know, there was a time that I had taught this lesson without printed notes, and we wrote all this by hand. But I like using the notes. I like filling the blank. I think it makes the pacing of the class move smoother, and so that's why I started using them. They're also to, um, to benefit my students because it gives you a little bit more time to think about what we're talking about and not be so busy in writing the notes while I'm trying to talk. But for those who are online, right, you can pause the video at any time. So because you can pause the video, you have the choice of either filling out these notes like I'm doing ahead of time and then watching a the video and filling them out. Or you can fill them out as you're watching a video. Or if you come to the live class, I recommend that you do what I'm doing right now, which I'm going to create my note set right now. And then I'll fill them out as I'm watching the video. So in other words, I'm not going to put everything on here. I'm just going to put exactly what I see that's on the paper copy that's left blank, like what you saw in Google Classroom. So let's go ahead. Now notice I did have two ordered pairs. My placement on them are going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to place them up here. The two ordered pairs that were in that quadrant were 4, 5, and then we had 0, 2. Now this was in that top left quadrant. In the right hand side it had this broken up in steps so I'm going to go ahead and write those steps for instance it said step one and on step one it said plot the two points and then draw a line between the two points. Now, if you're looking and going, well, Mr. H, do I have to use a pink pen like you? No, absolutely not. Mr. H just uses a pink pen because when I have, even when I write on paper, if I don't use different color pens, sometimes I start mixing things up when I get too many letters or too many words together. And it helps me be able to see so that I can write everything really clearly 
and make sure I didn't leave anything out. So that's just me, and, and it, it helps some of my students too. Some of my students like how I use different colors. It makes it stand out, and that way the text doesn't all mix together. But it's up to you if you'd like to use different colors or not. Step two says, create a right triangle. So notice I have written all my steps. I am now going to go ahead and make an additional line because I'm going to work out my problem right here to the side of my instructions. Again, I'm just making this look very similar to the notes that I have that are printable. So they look just like the ones we have in Google Classroom. Now that we've written all the information that's in those first two top left boxes of our notes, I can go ahead and start watching the video and filling out my notes with the other information that applies. Now in this case, remember we had a point at 4.5 and we had one at 0.2. So if I go ahead and I put one at 4.5, so I'm going to count over 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so it's set at 4.5, so I'm going to go over 4 and then I'm going to go up 5. So I'm going to put a point right there and that's point 4.5. Then I have a point at zero two, so I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go left and right zero, right? That's the first number. And the second number is two, so I'm gonna go up one, two. A point there, and that would be zero two. Now, at this point, I'm actually watching the video that's inside of Google Classroom, and I'm just doing each step along with the instruction that I see in the video. Also, these steps are available on my notes, right? Because I just wrote them down. So notice it says, go ahead and plot the two points and then draw a line between the two points. Well, we plotted the point zero two, we plotted the point four five, and now I'm gonna draw a line between them. Step two, create a right triangle using these same two points. Okay, if I wanna create a right triangle, I'm gonna go straight over until I get even with that point right there, four five, and then I'm gonna go up. Notice I can make my right angle here. Step three says count the units for each leg of the triangle, leg A and leg B. So following along with the video, I'm gonna count the units. So when I say units, how many spaces we move over to get to the end of this triangle? Well, we moved over one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna circle it. Now, at going from here, this point right here where we stopped, right? Because we went over four units, one, two, three, four. So we're lined up with that line, positive four. I want to know how many units I got to go up. So if I'm counting, I went up one unit. That's up one space. Then I go up another space. So that's two units. And then I got to go up another space. And it's three. And then notice that lines up with five. So that'll be three units. So that's a three right there. So notice I went over four units and then up three units. Notice the video, it matches what you see me doing here and this is just my sketch. Does it look perfect? Absolutely not. I probably could have drawn a better graph, got the spacing better. But remember, when you're writing your notes on notebook paper, Mr. H is not looking for perfection. I am just looking to see, did you attempt to draw a rough sketch of what we did in the video? And did you write down the words and information that I had in the notes? And did you do the work? And if the answer is yes, you get an easy hundred. So let's go ahead now that we've drawn this, we're gonna move on to the next step. We've done step one, step two, and step three. Step four says substitute the values for leg A and leg B into the Pythagorean theorem's formula. Well, remember our formula, I'm gonna rewrite it up here. That's where we're gonna do our work. We have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now we're trying to find C, and C is the distance between the two points, that's in pink. So if I were to go ahead and solve that following the notes that I have set for you. Now what I want to do is go ahead and write my summary at the bottom. 
So I am going to go ahead and use my ruler just to come on, go ahead and cut this off. Now, of course, if you don't have a ruler at home, you don't have to use a ruler to make the little boxes. I just make them because I feel like it makes it easier for me to write. And I'm going to write beside it, summary. And I want to go ahead and write a summary for this using the words that I saw in the word bank of the notes. So if you look here at the bottom of the word bank on the notes, you'll see that it actually had several words there. So I'm going to show you. This is the actual notes that we used in class. And on the word bank, it had Pythagorean theorem, legs, hypotenuse, right triangle, right angle, and converse. I want to use those words, at least as many of them as I can, inside of my summary here. Now, I don't have to, you don't have to use all of them, but use as many as you can. And you should always be describing the process that you used to solve the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and start out. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our sentence stem, right? So when we use our sentence stems, the first sentence stem is Today I learned. Now that is a sentence stem. You always start off your summary by saying today I learned. And then you fill in the rest with your own words. So today I learned. And I'm going to say how to use the Pythagorean, which is one of my words, theorem to solve for the distance between two points. That was my first sentence. My next sentence then is going to be first you need to now I'm going to go ahead right I created these process steps to solve this so it's going to sound very similar to what we just wrote above but this is in your own words so what I've noticed is sometimes students follow my steps perfectly and sometimes they kind of make their own steps that they think are a little bit more meaningful to them and that's perfectly fine so when you say first you need to with that sentence stem, I want you to tell me the truth about what you did first. Now you could, if you did the same thing I did first, that's perfectly fine, you can write that. But I want you to explain to me what is it that you did. So I'm gonna say first you need to plot the points. That was the very first thing that I did. There's a sentence. So now I'm going to go to my next step. What did I do next? So then I'm going to write for my next sentence then, next, you should, I'm going to think, what did I do next? And I'm going to say, draw a line between the two points. And I counted the units of each leg. So I counted the units for A and B. So now we're going to our final step because you're making this into four steps. So when I write that final sentence stem, I'm going to say last of all, so last of all, you must. Okay, so now I'm saying what did I do last? So okay, well last of all, you must substitute your values into the formula and solve for the hypotenuse and I'm done now did these steps 
perfectly match what we had written in the notes? No, they didn't, right? Because in the notes, we had five steps. Here, I try to explain what I did in four sentences. But notice I said, today I learned, using my sentence stem, how to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the distance between two points. First, you need to plot the points. Next, you should draw a line between the two points, and I counted the units of each leg. Last of all, you must substitute your values into the formula and solve for the hypotenuse. I have explained in four sentences exactly how I solved the two problems on the front. And I explained it in my own words. That's what you'll be doing in your summaries. You're always going to explain in your own words, using four sentences, to the best of your ability, how you solved the problems that were on the front of the notes. You will also always use as many of these words as you can that are right here in the word bank that can be seen online in Google Classroom. Now you don't have to write the word bank at the bottom. That's not required, but you just use as many of these words as possible in your summary. For instance, in my summary, I use the word Pythagorean theorem, legs, hypotenuse, and that's it. But I use three of them. And you can see that I had Pythagorean theorem right here. I had the word leg right here and I had the word hypotenuse right here. Now just take a picture of your notes and then either email them to me or turn them in person so that you can get credit for completing them. Thank you.